Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. And uh, yesterday I made a video on this. A very simple and straightforward pintle style hinge. Crudely constructed with three holes to mount it to the door portion. So, for those of you that don't know what a pintle is, it's uh, a little L-shaped object with a round portion that this slides over. So the hinge can literally just slip down on there and function. Uh, some of them are drive pendles, like used on shutters, uh, where it's simply a nail that turns 90 degrees into a cylindrical that this can mount on and move. Um, this one's going to be just a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the portion out, turn the 90, step it out to where it can actually move, to where it can be fastened in the same way as the hinge to the frame. So we're going to make a little pintle pivot for this hinge. And uh, as promised, this is the size stock that was used. It's a little snug, but that's good. That means it'll stay where I put it. So what we got to do is heat this up, bend that 90 degrees, and that's where we're going to start. And I'm going to try to upset that back down a little bit to create a sharper corner. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, I've got a good portion of it hot. I'm going to put it down in the Pritchell hole. And then I'm going to bend it over. There we go. Now, I'm going to spot cool this and try to upset it. i got a squirt bottle here. I'm going to cool that head a little bit. cool around here a little bit. I'll try to knock that down just a hair. I don't want to knock it out around because I want the hinge to be able to move well on it. And I'd say that's a pretty fair 90 degrees. Check it from this angle. Um, let's grab our hinge. Alright, there's room for it to slip down on there. Rotate. It's going to be a little stiff, but we'll have to heat the joint up and move it back and forth uh, when it's time for the fitting. But you can kind of see the principle. So what I've got to do now is I've got to uh, flatten a portion here and in order to do that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off about right here on the hot cut so let's get it warmed up and we'll do that see you in a minute alright let's cut the thing off I think I'll cut it right about there. Cut it off nice. Knock the barb down. I think I need to file it. Let's lock it in the vise and file it. See if I can adjust this thing. My handle kind of got snapped off. My little camera jig here. New post vise. Courtesy County Line Forge. Thanks, Ting Ting. I needed something that actually grabs the metal.
Old plumbing pliers, kind of handy. There we go. I've kind of rounded it. I've, I'm not trying to go for a, a flat cut because I'm going to spread the end out to make it look a little bit better with the, the hinge portion. Let's get back over here. Back down to business. Remove that hot cut when not in use. Knuckle punching one of those things is not something that I'm looking forward to doing and it's something that I have done before uh, despite good advice. So, there's what we got so far. Let's isolate some material, do the end up, flatten it out, and then we're going to step this thing over to one side or another. Now, uh, stepping it over is kind of important because you want this part up. So, this is the part where it can be left or right hand hinge. Now, uh, in some of these pentels, the one on top is turned down. The one on bottom is turned up that way the door or the item you're swinging from the hinges can't be lifted off of the pins so by opposing the pins you can uh, achieve a solid mounting you would have to remove the pentels or the hinges in order to make the door come off so there's what we got let's work on isolating that material and it's going to be kind of wonky because we got part of it sticking up 90 degrees. So let's do it. See you in a minute. All right, let's flatten this thing out. Not too flat, but just to where it's not a piece of round stock. Flatten out some. Let's isolate some material in the corner of the anvil. All right, we've got our little bead there, and it's running vertically with the pintle there. So I'm going to draw out that portion with the cross pin, just as I did the hinge. See you in a minute. All right, let's draw that out. Tilt it off to one side. Untilt it. 
All right, there's what we got. So I think this area here needs to be spread out a little more about where the jaws end. I'm not going to go out of round with it, but I'm gonna to try to flatten it a little bit more there to be more receptive to punching holes through and uh, make it look a little nicer. See you in a minute. All right, let's chew that up a little bit. Try using the flat of the hammer. Some chop marks there. Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and center punch some marks. I like to use a saw face hammer for punching uh, just because it won't damage the punches. We had three holes in the other one. So it probably won't hurt to put three in this. Just for symmetry's sake. And because it has the whole weight. Now I didn't measure anything. I'm just putting them where it looks alright for me to put them. Let's see if I can't show you those marks. Well the steel's cold enough to view in the camera. There you go. Now I know that one's off center, but I'm gonna be punching the holes. This just gives me a visual on where to punch them. Let's get it hot, punch some holes, see you in a minute. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate one hole. You've seen me do this before. No need in having you sit through three of the same thing. You see your little mark on the back. Get it on the wood block. Knock the slug out. You can feel it when it goes. All right, let's straighten out the mess I made. Rock forge, pick up tongs. There's an hole in it. Little rag. That's fine. I'll punch the other two holes. We'll get back with the next step. See you in a minute. Now let's talk about something while I got it slow heating over there. You notice that the uh, the body of the hinge is not directly in line with the center of the hole. That's because it's outside mounted to the object that needs to move, such as your door or hatch or whatever you're going to use this hinge for. So when you put your pintle together, if the pintle is in the middle, well, the body of the pintle would be raised away from the surface that it's mounted on. And uh, you can adjust that if it's stepped in or, or whatnot, but we're just assuming flat to flat mounting. So the edge of the cylindrical part, the pintle itself, needs to be flush with the outside surface of the pintle body and you need to think about the orientation of your hinge when you're doing that let's say your hinge is mounted um, well like this 
the way you're looking at it. That pentel needs to be bent out this way in order to clear and the body of it remain flat to its mounting surface. Uh, a drive pentel, that don't matter. It's just straight because it's driven straight in and it sticks straight out and you can drive it as deep as need be. But for one that's flat mounted such as this hinge is, the offset is very important and it's relevant uh, to know what side your hinges are going to be on. If this is going to be the bottom hinge, the pinnel needs to face up. And therefore, if it's going to be on the left, well, you need to make sure that you think about that when you're making the offset. If it's going to be on the right, you turn that around, it's completely wrong. It'd be leaning in and you, there's no way you could mount it flatly. So try to bear in mind the orientation. There's left and right handed hinges. Now if it's on top and you choose to make the panel face down in order to keep the door from being liftable off of the pins, then uh, you have to consider that as well. Just try to keep your head wrapped around what side the hinge needs to go on. And if you're making these uh, to sell to people, like at craft fairs and such, uh, make sure that you have opposites available because they might not want to swing something to the left. They might want to swing it to the right. Um, so that's worthy of taking note of. All right, I'm gonna finish punching these holes. We'll get back with this and uh, we'll see if we can't get a good fitment on everything. See you in a minute. All right, here it is. Now, if you have a swage block or something with the a close diameter of, of your spindle there, you can heat up that end and drive that down in there and beat on this part, and you can create a little shoulder for the hinge to ride on, which is great, uh, but I'm not going to do that in this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up. If you notice, that's not quite straight. So I'm going to take a wooden mallet and kind of work on that a little bit to get it more 90 degrees and take some of the bow out of it. And uh, then we're going to go to the vise and offset it and try to put this thing together. See you in a minute. Alright, let's take the wooden mallet because it won't deform the metal. Now let's straighten the equation here. And it smells great. We could probably offset this now over the edge of the anvil, but I'm going to do it in the vise because that's a more controlled environment. So uh, I'm going to add just a little more heat and we'll do that. See you in a minute. All right, let's knock this out a little bit. Get that out of there and go straighten it up on the anvil. See you in a minute. All right, let's correct this. Got to kind of side in the edge of this barrel with the outside of this and leave enough room for the uh, the hinge body to swing on it. Kind of straighten the equation. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to kind of size it up with what I got here. And see that the backs are flat now you see the reason for the offset I might have offset that a bit much adjustments are made easily all right well let's uh put it together and heat it up I'm not worried about doing this very cold because I'm 
beating on it. Talk about your primitive hardware. Alright. This part's cold. That's why I just grabbed it. So what I gotta do is I gotta heat this up and twist this thing around real good. And uh, I think the vise is selected for that. And get everything kind of worn in together backs are relatively flat you see why now that I offset that little pin so that would work for like a um, oh my left bottom or my right top so let's do that see you in a minute all right the hand is assembled I'm gonna worry it around a little bit I don't want to waller it too much. I want to kind of make it fit good. Now you can rivet the little end to where it doesn't pop off, but I don't like to do that. You might want to take the hinge apart, and it'd be difficult to do. You'd have to file off the edge of the rivet head. See if I can't get this thing tuned a little bit. I think that's good. Get over here at the clinch bucket. For y'all that haven't experienced the Mankey Tank Challenge issued by Valhalla Forge a long while back, my bucket is nasty. We rarely ever clean them. Some people think that they contain magical properties. No, I think maybe they contain malaria. I don't know. Okay, that moves all right. We'll finish cooling this thing off well. Or I can handle it. something stays wet and doesn't steam it's generally a, a clue that perhaps it's handleable but don't take any chances a little bite to it now you can take this out and work on it with a file or a tube of sandpaper you can core that out a little bit with a drill or whatnot. See, it's got a little catch in it, but it works. So there's the basic principle of a pencil hinge. See that little catch? A little catch in it. There we go. I guarantee you, you can swing stuff off of this. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, second part of this. And uh, I will be making hinge videos in the future to show you a little bit more, uh, not only ornate, but sturdy and smoother version of a hinge. But if this was on the top, you get that fit where you like it. It just basically holds the weight from flopping towards the jam on the bottom now, like I said before you have to pay attention to what side you're offsetting it to and uh, for a bottom hinge you want a, that corner a little more upset uh, and a collar here would be nice like if you have a swage block something with this size hole in it you can drive that down and get yourself a nice surface but this is a very barbaric basic way of making a pintle and hinge well that's all i got for this evening i hope you gleaned something from this 
and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making this thing. Till next time, bye.